Max Snowplow. Here's a few shots. Cue the intro and let's get into this build. Snow is just around the corner. Pueblo, Colorado. This is a uh, six foot, a uh, 72 inch plow blade that I'm going to mount to the tractor. It's actually set up for a large ATV. Getting a plow for my Coyote tractor, uh, one that's made to mount right to it. They're like two grand uh, on up uh, for here. We really don't get that much snow. I don't need a heavy duty thing. I just need something to do the job. Uh, this blade was 300 bucks, so uh, it beats me making a blade on my own. It's got the nice curve to it. Uh, I will have to do all the mounting and springs, and uh, I also want it to be able to mount to the blade on my front end loader because that will be very convenient. Uh, very easy to slip on, go out and do the work. I mean, there will be winters where I likely won't even need it. I do want to get in the habit of uh, being able to uh, get the light snow off the road before it turns to ice. Because so as the snow plow goes forward on the ground, it's going forward on the ground. When it hits an obstruction, you don't want to boom and it's going to you know, tear your snow plow up. So generally what they do is make it to where it pivots down toward the bottom of the snow plow. And then it has springs on it, so it, it's biased into this position, and then when it hits something, you just go thring, which also allows you to see, you see the thing move, so you know that you've, you know, hit something, and you have to, you know, make adjustments. So, that's what the springs are for. Okay, let's plow forward, push ahead, and scrape this project together. things I need to do with the bucket first. I need to straighten it out for one thing. Now you can see the uh, bend on the top, but I haven't started stretching it yet. A lot of force on it, and this isn't very sturdy up here. It's got a piece of reinforcement underneath, but it's uh, kind of flimsy, so I'm going to be welding in a piece to uh, reinforce this. Yeah. Just across that span, you can see, look, we're down by about a half an inch there in the middle. No, that's enough. Let's not overdo it. Now wait a minute, boys. Alvin, cut that out. Wait, stop. Theodore, just a minute. Simon, will you cut that out? Get off.
Okay, see the uh, bucket here? So I did get the top edge. I haven't done the grinding yet. Decided I was gonna, uh, had to proceed with welding and get the snow plow done as soon as possible. Okay, the hooks are on. Sometimes it really helps to uh, mock things up before you go start cutting pieces and getting gung ho on it. Okay, see so we've got chucked up in the drill press. We've got the plate. I'm gonna bore the hole in here, one and three eighths inch for the bushing. And you can see I have it secured to a piece of two by, so it's screwed down on the, on the four sides. Cutting oil on the roof. See there, I've drilled a bunch of holes around the perimeter of the circle and uh, small holes the width of the kerf. I'm going to go ahead and see if uh, it makes the boring any easier. Now if you've got a uh, drill, drill press that's uh, more substantial than this, this one the belt slips and all that's only third horsepower. Let's see how this thing would move around. If you had a three quarter horsepower, this thing could like throw this thing, hurt your arm and everything. You need to really bolt it down. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Okay, so there's the hole. Now, do a similar thing on the other side. Well, now I need to make a uh, hole in the side of this with a three quarter inch. <laughs> Countered a, a setback. Setback. <clears throat> I studied long and hard some of the different uh, snowplow <clears throat> approaches, and uh, some of the, the critical elements there were obviously you need to be able to, you know, adjust the snowplow blade angle like this up to like 30 degrees on both sides. Okay, that was taken care of in the design. Uh, the other thing is allow the blade to tilt, actually tilt the other way. When you're going forward and you hit an obstruction, they have it spring-loaded and it would tilt forward. <coughs> okay, so I set up articulation for that as well, so it could go forward. And uh, the other element was for the float. You really want the, the weight of the snow plow to push down on the snow rather than being forced like I could use my front end loader but the front end loader you know is fixed and it can't like float and go up and down so it will tend to tear up the asphalt and, and that's not a good thing so you want the ability to have it float and most of the time you'd use it in a float mode um, but you do at some points want to apply more pressure so that was adjusted so I had the articulation for that and putting a shock absorber in so that I could change the bucket angle and increase the forces. Uh, so have a total float, just weight, shock absorber, not putting any pressure, and then tilting the bucket and increasing the pressure from the shock absorber so I could adjust the pressure. So I would have a float plus adjust pressure. Um, but what I never saw online was anyone discussing uh, another aspect was 
the angle of the blade in this way when it's going forward. Imagine a road, you're straight on the road. Now, a perfectly straight road, no problem. But roads, particularly out here in the country, they tend to, you know, go off to one side or the other. Uh, they also are crowned. Roads are crowned, so they're higher in the middle, and they taper off at the sides. Well, what this means is as you're trying to judge the side of this road, if your tractor is going in this direction, but the road slopes, if your blade is going to sit totally flat, even if it's floating, if it can't tilt, you've got a problem, okay? It's just going to scrape off part and you're going to miss this whole area down here. So you need it to be able to adjust in this direction. Uh, and somewhere, to my mind, I would need where I'm at three to six inches. Oh, wow, quite a wind out there. Um, of that adjustment and I didn't have that in there <clears throat> and that just dawned on me yesterday after I had welded up this piece so I sat down and looked at the options and how I might design around that and the, the only real viable option I came up with the easiest to implement was to change my bar arrangement which I already welded up so uh, I'm going to be able to reuse the material here Oh, by the way, yesterday while I was putting this in, I found I had to uh, bend it ever so slightly in this angle. So uh, it doesn't really bend easily cold. So I had to sledgehammer out. And I was like, I don't know, winging it like this. Somehow my, my foot slipped off it and caused the thing to move just as I, I wound up to swing. <laughs> Missed this and it went right into my leg. Oh, right into the shin. And I, was, I was telling Mrs. R.H. that if it had been her, it would have broken her leg. Got a big old, big old bruise there. <laughs> big lump on my leg. But uh, thankfully, it didn't, uh, didn't break anything. Yeah, if it now had been chainsaw, I would have taken other precautions, you know. It's like, I didn't actually expect that the, you know, you might get a glancing blow or something. Uh, if you really mess up, but uh, I didn't expect to get a direct hit. So be careful, use jigs whenever possible, don't trust your balance, <laughs> RH. See you on the next one. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to shift into firewall forward and really get plowing. So get the metal out, get the welder, get this thing rolling. RH here, hasta la projecto.